Minnesota Fighting Vikings are the best four and five team in NFL history. Three wins in a row against divisional foes, and, and nothing is going to stand in the way of the Vikings making it four straight wins, moving to five and five, staying alive at 500, and then rising. Not even, especially not the two and seven lowly, deceitful Dallas Cowboys. They're one of the worst teams in the NFL. Well, but what about the injuries? What about the injuries? What about the Vikings injuries? Huh? What about Daniel Hunter? Hmm? Minor, minor details. And I get it. No Dak, no Tyron Smith, no Lyle Collins, no Trevon Diggs now, no Leighton Van Der Esch. Ah, whatever. W- whatever. All right. Next man up and you're, you're coming on in. And he, here's the thing. So Vikings fans, we have this weird historical thing with the Cowboys. Well, it's not even that weird, right? But for younger, uh, younger fans, it is a little bit dated. So 1975, the Drew Pearson push-off. It wasn't the Hail Mary. It was the push-off in the playoffs. And some older Vikings fans will tell you that 75 team may have been the best team even uh, among the Super Bowl loser team. So, bam. Then, of course, the Herschel Walker trade uh, setting up the Cowboys for that Super Bowl run. Sure, even though the Vikings weren't necessarily that worse for the wear after the trade. It's, again, it's whatever. And also, the fact that Cowboys fans... Especially when they just get a little shred of some mojo. Like, they are the most boisterous, obnoxious, uh, annoying, horrid fan base out there. They really are. And us Vikings fans, like, we talk about Packers fans and also Eagles fans. But, I mean, Cowboys fans are, are just different, man. They just slap different. Where they're, they're still thumping their chest. Jerry Jones, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Super Bowls. I mean, that was like the 90s, man. Like, why do you keep bringing up stuff that's 30 years ago? What what are you, a proto-Packers fan? Just waiting to bring up stuff that's 50 years ago? Get out of here, please. I digress. But uh, the Vikings should and could be able to take care of business on Sunday. Uh, I think Dalvin will be able to cook against the 31st defense against the run, uh, even though Chicago shut him down for 96 yards. I think that also without Trevon Diggs, that secondary is uh, depleted of talent. So I think Justin Jefferson, I think Adam Thielen will be able to cook uh, and do some uh, do some great things as well. Offensive line, if Demarcus Lawrence misses with that illness, yeah. Uh, I think it could be a relatively good day, although Alden Smith, uh, the uh, probably like fifth place and comeback player of the year, but it's awesome to see him down there, gotten his life together as well as doing phenomenal on the field. Just don't do phenomenal on Sunday. How about that? And the Vikings, fortunately, without superstar rookie phenom Ezra Cleveland at right guard, Brett Jones, the, the constantly overlooked and disrespected Brett Jones finally gets his chance to shine. I think they'll be fine in that spot. Kirk Cousins will be protected. He will be able to make a couple of throws. Uh, Dalvin in the run game will be able to take a lot of pressure off of him as well. And we saw Green Bay, Lions, training wheels on, Chicago, woo, especially on third down uh, against that big, bad Chicago defense. Oh, by the way, you hear that? The Monday Night Football crew is still talking about the Bears' defense and how great they are. Please. The best defense on that field Monday night was the Minnesota Vikings. That Mike Zimmer deserves a ton of credit for that. Uh, it's really unfortunate before the bye. Three games that didn't show up. Week one, Green Bay. Week two, Indianapolis. Against the Falcons, got smacked by a winless team at home. Sure. But after the bye, that this team is starting to get things together. Even after trading Yannick the freaking Gakwe, uh, the young guys up front, uh, Afadi, Jaleel Johnson, Jalen Holmes, and of course, DJ friggin' Wanham, as well as Hercules Mata'afa are getting after it up front. Hell, Shamar Stefan is getting after it. I mean, when Shamar Stefan is leading the way uh, as a defensive interior force, looking like Aaron Donald out there, let's go. Let's go. So, big credit to Zimmer, Andre Patterson. They're generating a pass rush. And of course, it all starts up front. If you get pushed up front, if you're able to get home with four, it does make everything else easier, especially for the linebackers. Eric Wilson, Eric Hendricks, the best two cover linebackers in the NFL. Eric Hendricks, the best linebacker uh, in the league, in, in my opinion, as well as Eric Wilson should be a Pro Bowler this year. Do the damn thing and go out and vote. Cornerbacks, they're really starting to get things together. Earlier weeks, they got shelled. Gladney didn't even play week one. Cameron Dancer shelled. Holton Hill shelled. Uh, Mike Hughes shelled. They're starting to work it out and get things together. Chris Boyd is looking damn good. Chris Jones is looking like a keeper. Jeff El Jefe Gladney is phenomenal as a starter on the outside as well as kicking inside to nickel because nickel is the new base. Harrison Smith can dominate a game without making a damn tackle. Anthony Harris is getting back uh, to where he once belonged the last two years. Also, what's neat about Harris is that they're using him more and more as a Harrison Smith adjacent type role. So not just a cover one, sitting back in covered safety. They're working him on blitzing. They're bringing him up in the box. It's really interesting to see. So I think the Vikings do get it done again, but they need to get their crappy special teams in order. 
Detroit, two punts blocked. Uh, Chicago gave up the Cordero 104-yard kick return, as well as gave up a big punt return to Anthony Miller in the fourth quarter. They have to get their stuff in order. It all is about execution, knowing your job, and doing your job, especially Dan Chisenna. You know, the rookie UDFA star uh, punt gunner. He's got to be able uh, to rein it in a little bit. Yes, you are the fastest guy on the field. Yes, you are 6'3 and run like a deer. Hey, keep your lane, do your job, take good angles, get do better in pursuit, and stop busting things up. So there you go. So I think Mara Maloof uh, and company, if they get that in order, they should be good to go. And yes, Andy Dalton is back. He's better than Garrett Gilbert. He's better than Ben DiNucci, all that stuff. The offensive line is in tatters. Uh, Zeke hasn't had a 100-yard game this season. Uh, he's averaged 52 uh, and change yards uh, per game the last four games. I think that the Vikings can shut down the run. They can get pressure on Andy Dalton. And even though uh, Dallas does have a damn fine trio of receivers in, in Amari and CD as well as Michael Gallup, I think that the Vikings will shut them down. I think that they'll be able to get pressure on Andy Dalton. They'll stop the run. And Jeff, especially Jeff Gladney on CD Lamb in the slot is going to be a lot of fun. I, I think that they will be negated. I, I think that the Dallas Cowboys wide receivers will be shut down in effect uh, by the Vikings cornerbacks and just another notch in that belt. And yeah, maybe the Vikings have been tiptoeing through the tulips just a little bit uh, since the bye. It's like Packers, Devonta Adams, and then no one. And then Detroit missed Babytron and Chicago is garbage besides Allen Robinson. But if they do it in this spot against three extremely good wide receivers, woo! Zimmer Hellfire defense is back. That cornerback room is back. And guess what? At 5-5 five and five with Arizona losing, uh, Vikings would move into that 8 seed with Chicago on the bye. Both 5-5. Five and five. Vikings obviously one up in the tiebreaker. So guess what? The Vikings are one game out of the wild card. Boo, Arizona. Lose every single game going forward. Or the Rams. Don't care. Not picky. Just someone is going to give up a wild card spot. And the Vikings, if they take care of the business week after week after week, they will get in the playoffs. If they win out, there's a 99.9999% chance that they uh, do get a wild card spot. Make it into the dance. And let's go. And uh, just, ama- just think about where this team is. Super confident. Dalvin playing at MVP adjacent level. That defense is starting to get things together. Justin Jefferson is looking like rookie of the year. Did you expect this when the Vikings started out 0-2 and Justin Jefferson was playing like five snaps a game? He got like three targets in each of the first two games. Absolutely got smoked at home by by the uh, Packers. Uh, Kirk Cousins gave it away, gave it away, gave it away now against the Colts. And everyone's like, blah, 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 blah. And then you get moved to 1-5. and five. Justin Jefferson, sure, looking good. Dalvin missed that that Falcons game. And you're like, eh, less ideal. Then they traded Yannick. If you could bet on the Vikings to make the playoffs at that point, I think that you would have made a handsome uh, amount or you would have gotten great odds because even though the work is still have to be done, you do have to love the the trajectory of the way this team uh, is rolling. And the way that they're winning is sustainable. It is not flukes. They're getting it done. Uh, and also, they're winning games that they're supposed to, especially that Detroit Lions one. So, Dallas is another one of these games. Same thing with Carolina. Same thing with Jacksonville. Like we talked about in the uh, five keys to victory. Number one, do not overlook Dallas. Do not fall into the trap game. And also, it may be a blessing in disguise that this team went through so much adversity early on, as well as they started out in such a big hole, because there is no room for error right now. You cannot get lax at all. You cannot do anything uh, that uh, if you mess up, if you drop a game, if you don't show up, and guess what? You don't have the luxury uh, of doing that like you may have if you did have a winning record or you've been playing good football the entire way. So in a way, the horrible start and then getting your ish together may galvanize this team since it's been a one-week playoff every single week since the bye. So allow ourselves to dream. Allow ourselves to dream. Because guess what? The way that the Vikings are playing now, defense getting together, uh, Cousins making a few key plays. Justin Jefferson looking like one of the best rookie wide receivers in NFL history. Dalvin Cook playing at MVP level. Guess what? No one wants any of the smoke come January, come February. Woo! Especially if the Vikings get in as a wild card and home field advantage is negated. If there are limited to no fans in your stadium. Let's go. Let's go. But it all starts on Sunday. Late game. Dallas, you're going down. That's right. Uh, but your thoughts. 17,000 reasons why the Vikings will win on Sunday. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post some of the Venmo, but until next time, Skull Production Value.